Mu'rab and Mabni. So before we start lesson 9, um, I want everyone to look at this. And these are three English sentences. The pronoun he, him, and his is the same masculine pronoun. But because of its position in the sentence, the way it is written has changed. So here it's he help, where he is the subject. And then when it's the object, it's I helped him, not I helped he. And then when it's in possession of, of, it, of an object, it's his, not he pen, but his pen. And this in English is called inflection in grammar. Uh, in Arabic, it's called al-i'rab. And that is the subject for today's video. What is i'rab? It's the changing of the last vowel of a word, the last vowel of a word based on its influencers. Okay, and i'rab is the most important thing. It's the most important thing in Nahu. And you might be wondering, well, why are we learning it now after nine lessons? Well, the reason is that I wanted to have a lot of examples that I could use so that it could be easier to understand. Because at I Arabic, we don't just concentrate on grammar, but we try and make sure that everything is understood and applied. So how does I'rab work? An influencer word, A, let's call it, also known as Amil, the influencer is known as Amil, changes the ending of word B, what is known as Ma'mul. And let's look at an example to see how this is applied. So if you remember from, from video 8.1, we did the verse Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And so we know that both of them are kasras. But let's say we didn't know because most texts in, in Arabic don't have any harakat. So how would we find out? Well, we know that this is lam because it doesn't have an alif. And we know that lam is an amil. Why? Because it's a harf al-jar as we learned in lesson number eight. And we know that harf al-jar changes the ending of the word that it's attached to, to a kasra. So it becomes lillahi. Lillahi. Why? Because of this lam. And so this lam is our amil and the word Allah is our ma'mul. Now another way that i'rab works is that an influencer word, a, amil, changes word b, ma'mul, which changes word c, which is tabi'. So, taking that same verse, we have Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. So, again, we have Lam, which is the Amil. And then we have Allah, which is the Ma'mul. That's why it has this Kasra. Then we have Rabb. And if you remember from the last video, I said that Rabb is an adjective describing Allah. And so, because of that, Rab takes the same haraka, the same vowel as Allah does. So because Allah has a kasra, Rab also gets a kasra. And so Rab is what's known as a tabir. And al alamin we already discussed that. And so once we've gotten that and we've understood that, we can categorize the ism as the grammarians did in terms of the words where the ending changes and the words where the ending doesn't change. The words in which it changes are known as Mu'rab and the words in which it doesn't change are known as Mabani. So the first one is Mu'rab. And in Mu'rab the ending does change and the influencer does work. So taking that same example in English, we have he helped I helped him and his pen. And these are mu'rab because they're changing as they're supposed to. And if we were to bring it into an Arabic sentence, we have qalamu zaydin and zaydun qa'imun. Now zaydun qa'imun, the dhammas are there as, I, as I've told you because the dhammas are the default. There is no amil, right? There is no room for an amil. There's no influencer. So the default is dhamma. But when we were to put an influencer here, where we put a mudaf, and as we know that a mudaf makes the mudaf ilay, or the word that comes after it, have a kasra. And so when we put that mudaf there, it was successful in giving Zayd a kasra. Therefore, we know that Zayd 
is a mu'rab word. It's a word where the ending does change and the influencer, qalam, does work. Now, just to take a note, mu'rab words are mostly ism, sometimes fi'l, but never harf. Okay, so most of them are isms, and sometimes there will be verbs occasionally that are mu'rab, but never any harfs, never any particles. And the second category is mabni. And in mabni, the ending doesn't change and the influencer doesn't work. So in English, for example, I have the word Henry. Henry helped, I helped Henry, Henry's pen. Unlike the masculine pronoun he, Henry did not change. It stayed the same. And so bringing that into Arabic, we have قَلَمُ هَذَا ضَرَبْتُ هَذَا Now قَلَمُ هَذَا هَذَا is supposed to have two kasras. But because it's mabni, it does not change, it remains هَذَا Similarly, when I say ضَرَبْتُ هَذَا هَذَا because it's the object, and we'll get into what I mean by um, the object of a verb. But because it's an object of a verb, it's supposed to have a fatha. But it does not have a fatha, it has remained hadha, as it always does. And so because of that, we know that this word is mabani. And another note, all huruf, most fi'l, and some isams, are mabni. So all the hurufs you'll find are mabni. Most of the verbs you find are mabni, and only some nouns are mabni.